Hi, everyone. Today I'm here with problem 2.60 from Young and Freeman's University Physics textbook. Let's get started. A subway train starts from rest at a station and accelerates at a rate of 1.60 meters per second squared for 14 seconds. It runs at a constant speed for 70 seconds and slows down at a rate of 3.50 meters per second squared until it stops at the next station. Find the total distance covered. All right, so this, this problem is really interesting because there are, we can split it into three parts to solve for it. So let's break down this question. We can see that it starts from rest at a station and it accelerates. Uh, yeah, so it starts from rest and accelerates to uh, at a rate of 1.60 meters per second for 14 seconds. So that is the first part of this problem. Then the second part is it runs at a constant speed for 70 seconds and slows down and then slows down. So at a constant speed for 70 seconds, that is the second part. And then it slows down at a rate of 3.50 meters per second until it stops. And that is the third part. So if we want to find the total distance covered, we just have to find what is D1, distance one plus distance two plus distance three. And from there we'll have, we can just get the total distance. So distance total, there we go. Okay, so let's get started with D1. So in D1, we know that it starts at rest. So VI one is equal to zero meters per second. Then acceleration is equal to 1.60 meters per second squared, right, as we said. And then that is going to be for the time that it takes, the time that it accelerates for is 14 seconds. Okay. okay, then we know this is for D1. So I'm gonna label that with a, another color. So let's say that this is, D1. And then let's look at D2. So for D2, it, it's going to be running at a constant speed at the beginning, which means that we need to find out what VF is here because VI2 is going to be equal to VF1. These two values, they're equal to each other because when the train accelerates to a certain speed, then it stays running at that speed. Then we, it's going to be VF1. And then we know that that's going to happen for 70 seconds, right? And that is going to be our D2. So I'm going to label that in green. And then we have our D3, so our third part of the problem. And at this point, it is going to be the VI3, because it's at a constant speed, it's going to be the same as VF1 or VI2. And the acceleration is going to be for 3.50 meters per second squared. So we can say that's because it's slowing down, we can see that that's negative three, right? And then we can do VF is equal to zero meters per second. That's gonna be our final speed. And we wanna find out what D3 is. And then when we add all these three together, we'll get the total distance. And so if we do that, and so if we do that, we are, let's start with, let's start with finding out what VF1 is. So using our kinematic equations, we know that VF1 is going to be VI1 plus A times T. 
And if we plug in all of our values into here, bf1 is equal to 0 plus a times t, which is 1.6 times 14, then we're getting 22.4 meters per second. And then we have our vf1. If we want to find what d1 is, we can just use a different kinematic equation, right? So we can use d is equal to vi t plus half of a t squared. Again, we just plug in all of our values into this equation from d1 right over here. And when I do that, I'm not going to write this all out, but just vi1 is equal to 0, t14, 1.6. When, we, when I plug in all those values, what I'm getting is 22 point, oh, sorry, not 22.4. I'm getting, um, sorry about that, 156.8 meters. Okay. And so now for D2, we have what VI2 is equal to, right? So we know that VI2 is equal to VF1 is equal to 22.4 meters per second. And you know that t is equal to 70 seconds. And because there is no acceleration involved in here, all we really have to do is just use our simple speed equation. So d is equal to vi2 times t. And when I plug in my values for that, so 22.4 times 70, what I get is 1,568 1, meters. And that's our D2. So I'm just going to go over that with blue, just so that, or green, sorry, just so that we're clear what D2 is. D2, D2 is equal to 1568 meters. Okay. And now let's get to, in blue, I'm going to do D3. And so D3, again, we know what VI is. VI3 is equal to VF1 is equal to VI2 is equal to 22.4 meters per second, right? And we have our acceleration, we have our um, VF, and what we're going to do is the kinematic equation that uses all of these is going to be VF squared plus vi squared plus 2ad. So um, something just to be careful about is that this is the one equation where um, really sign doesn't matter because we have to use like the logic of the question to figure out whether it's going to be a negative or positive because these two squares, when we square something, then we get two answers, right? So we get a positive vf and we get a negative vf. So because of this, um, positive and negative doesn't really matter in this um, uh, this equation. But let's go ahead and plug in our values. So VF is equal to zero. VI is equal to um, 22.4. And then we have plus 2 times negative 3.5 divided by D. Oh, sorry, no, uh, times D is, we don't know what D is. So we're going to isolate for that. So we're going to say negative. 22.4 um, squared divided by 2 times negative 3.5. Then we get the distance. So when we do that, the d value I'm getting is 71.68 meters. All right. And that's our d3. So we have our D1 right here. We have our D2 and we have our D3. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to add these together. So D1 plus D2 plus D3 is equal to total distance covered. And adding those up, I'm getting D total is equal to 1,868.16 meters. And that's our final answer. Um, thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, please. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or feel free to email me at the email in the description. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.